Welcome to ASQ TV, where we're creating a global view of quality. In this episode, we examine Lean and Six Sigma. Hear how a global financial firm improved, discuss waste analysis, and look back at a comedy classic. We hear the terms Lean and Six Sigma used all the time. ASQ TV has featured both methods in the past, so why revisit them? Experts David Bailing and Maria Piment say because they work and will remain relevant. Piment sees the benefits of working with both methods. The way I see things is that there'll be more of a combination of the methodologies between Six Sigma and Lean. Uh, that creates quite a powerful tool when you combine those together. And I think in service industries, looking at to improving efficiencies and removing waste, I see the combination of those methodologies being more powerful. And in the next decade, I see that evolution occurring. Bailing agrees and believes the future will bring a change. Lean and Six Sigma will be called something different and it will be um, captured by different names. Um, I don't think that the concepts or the elements of Lean or Six Sigma have really changed since it first has been made, uh, been noted. However, it continually gets repackaged. And I think in a decade it will be repackaged and called something different. But when you read the book or you look at it, you'll see it's exactly the same thing that was taught 20 years ago. So it's likely that Lean and Six Sigma won't be going away. And Bailing has a suggestion about how to convince upper management to use the methods. Find something that upper management wants to change or fix. And then to show them the way on how to do it using Lean and quality. And it's not always easy. Um, one of the things I always like to do is make it ugly or make it visual. It's one of the uh, basic foundations of Lean and it really changes things. If you put something up on a board or you put something up in front of uh, management and show it to them on a daily, weekly basis and it is not flattering or it is not nice, um, they will want to change it. To hear more of David Bailing's Lean Insights, visit the link below. Organizations must worry about not only the customers they have, but also the ones they almost had. That was the thinking when a global financial firm realized that in Latin America, it was losing 40% of its applications for auto loans, mainly due to slow response times. That translated to 110 million US dollars in lost revenue every year. Using a combination of Lean and Six Sigma tools, the organization improved response times by as much as 98% in four countries. Faster response times meant better service, which, not surprisingly, resulted in increases in the number of applications received in three of the four countries. Capturing even a portion of that 40% of lost customers resulted in additional revenue in the millions of dollars. For the full story, read the case study on the ASQ website. The simplest thing an organization can do when applying Lean is to identify waste in its processes and work to eliminate it. To get started, conduct a waste analysis. It typically looks for waste in eight categories. Overproduction can happen anywhere in a process. Identify if there are business areas producing sooner or faster or in greater quantity than is needed by the next operation. Inventory can be an asset, but it needs to be stored, protected, located, handled, and retrieved. You must consider all possible liabilities when determining inventory. When defects occur, additional material, labor, or machine time may be required in addition to a possible increase in warranty costs and the potential for the R words, recall, refunds, rework, rewrite, and recalculate. Eliminate over-processing. In other words, get rid of steps that don't add customer value. Most workers can identify with this issue. Waiting for equipment, instructions, materials, approvals, responses, and so forth does not add value to a product or service. Ever wonder why a worker moves back and forth to retrieve parts for the same product? Now you're thinking like a lean professional. This could be a motion waste, which can be defined as any movement without work or adding value. So look to eliminate it. Transportation focuses on movement of parts and materials around the plant or facility, usually due to poor facility layout. Again, lean that out. Failing to make use of all an employee has to offer is waste. Truly lean organizations will not make this mistake. Look to minimize these eight wastes in your organization and you're on your way to being leaner. To learn more about identifying waste, check out the link below. 
can't make ASQ's World Conference in person? No problem! Thanks to new video technology, ASQ TV is bringing e-learning to the next level. On May 5, 6, and 7, ASQ TV will make select speaker sessions available online via live stream video. Watch the sessions live and in real time from the comforts of your home or office. No travel necessary. It's easy, affordable, and effective. And here's three reasons why. One, it's convenient. The live stream will be accessible from your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Two, it's on demand. You're in control of the live stream. Pause, restart, or rewind the video without missing any content. Three, it's low cost, high value learning. Don't let budget stop you from continuing your learning. Live streaming doesn't require you to pay for travel or hotels. Once you register, you're only a click away from accessing the sights and sounds of ASQ's World Conference. Register now to experience this quality event without having to be there in person. Think the eight wastes are a new thing? Not according to this 1952 episode of I Love Lucy. In this classic clip, Lucy and Ethel attempt to wrap chocolates. This is easier. Yeah, we can handle this, okay? So what have we learned from this scene? When companies overproduce, they eat it. The cost, that is. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode of ASQ TV. Next time, we explore the global impact of quality.